the site of an iconic reminder of the tremendous horrors and tragedies during the Civil War. This site is the prison camp Andersonville. Of the approximately 45,000 Union soldiers held at Andersonville, or known as Camp Sutner, nearly 13,000 men died, according to the National Park Service. According to CivilWar.org, the average age of the Union soldier was 25, which isn't much older than that traditional college-age student. All the research I have done indicates one thing. If you were captured by the Confederates, you better pray that you weren't sent to Andersonville. This is not the place to be. With such a high mortality rate at the camp, there has to be absolutely terrible living conditions. There are several reasons for why the camp at this why, there are several reasons why the conditions at this camp became a hellhole. The chief cause being disease along with harsh living conditions and starvation. One of the harsh living conditions is overcrowding at the camp. The conditions at the prison continually got worse over time due to overcrowding. The prison opened in February of 1864 and covered about 16.5 acres of land enclosed by a 15-foot high stockade. Unite's campus is 900 acres to put that into perspective. And that's an image of Andersonville right there. Um, there were 7,160 prisoners in Andersonville on April 1st of 1864, according to Robert Davis of Wallace State College. By July of 1864, the camp had swelled to 31,678 prisoners. That was too many people, especially considering the amount of space that they had. To put, that just in, to, put that how, to put just how many people were in the camp into perspective, the city of Cedar Falls has 40,000 as of the 2010 census. So imagine squeezing that many people into a space 54 times smaller than the campus we're on today. Now that you're aware of the immense overcrowding in the prison, let's mix in food shortages. At this time in the war, Andersonville was frequently undersupplied with food and had a lack of clean, drinkable water. The Confederate Army and civilians also struggled to get enough food, so the prisoners were basically last to get fed. Even when there were sufficient amounts of food, they were consistently of poor quality and poorly prepared. Sanitation became a huge issue in the prison. Most of the men were already coming into the camp malnutrition thanks to actually being in the war prior. So when they were captured, they were just, you know, starving. Uh, and then I have a picture of a guy, and that's him right there. He's, he looks pretty skin and bones right there. Um, there was also a small creek that ran through the camp, and it played a pivotal role. When the camp was first created, the plan was to use the creek as the water supply. But as the number of prisoners increased, the creek became heavily polluted. According to Robert Davis, the creek was basically turned into a swamp of raw sewage. They drank their own fecal matter. Some people even died in the creek and were basically decaying, so they were also drinking other humans, which is pretty disgusting. With all the food shortages and deplorable conditions of the creek, it's easy to see why Andersonville became a cesspool, cesspool for disease. Disease was rampant with the camp, and at certain points, as many as half the men in the prison were ill. The main problem was with the poor sanitation from the swampy creek, as it caused dysentery and also became a breeding ground for flies and mosquitoes to help spread diseases. Thanks to the lack of food, if you were already battling dysentery, you probably were suffering from scurvy. Both were deadly in the first place. Combining the two made the mortality rates off the charts. History.com says that this led to the death of 13,000 men at the camp <coughs> who were all buried in a nearby field. With all the disease and overcrowding, the camp couldn't get much worse, but it did, thanks to prisoners who were given the nickname the Raiders. As the population of the camp grew, crime also grew as men arrived. These crimes ranged from theft to assault and possibly even murder. The acts of the crimes were committed on an individual basis or in groups. Rumors included stories of raiders outright murdering other prisoners. The criminal activity fueled fear within the camp. Authorities failed to set up any form of regulation or law enforcement inside the prison, according to the National Park Service. Eventually, other prisoners organized to stop crime. These men were called the regulators. The regulators had a meeting with the Confederate authorities about how to deal with the raiders and came to the conclusion to create a special police force within that camp. The idea was to punish these criminals. With the permission of the Confederates, the regulators rounded up any suspected raiders within the camp. As many as 75 men were captured and put on the trial. Six of the raiders were sentenced to death by hanging, 
and were buried away from the other prisoners who had perished in the camp. Many of the prisoners in the camp that day rem um, remembered that day as being a positive and good one. So I want to conclude that Andersonville was an absolutely horrendous place to be sent to. There were many reasons why it became so awful, including other things not mentioned, like there was a lot of brutality among the prisoners from the guards, and there was also really bad weather. And um, so someone had to be blamed for all this, and that man was being was named uh, Henry Wurz. He was the officer in charge of Andersonville. He was the only person committed of war crimes during the Civil War and was sentenced to death as well. In all, around 13,000 men had died in Andersonville. Some of the images remind us of the concentration camps during the Holocaust. With such bad conditions and so many deaths in such a short period of time that as the camp was liberated in May of 1865, it is widely considered one of America's darkest moments in history. Thank you. Two right buttons adjust the zoom. 